Tasman is the training and technical assistance manager at Answer. Hi, Taz. How are you? Hi, Taz. Hello, everyone. I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, we, you know, time flies when you're having fun. We're, <laughs> we're on top of the world, Taz, and we're so excited for you to take over, show us, you know, uh, the amazing resources we have to offer, contextualize some things. And of course, I am ready for the Kahoot, even though you've already told me I cannot play to win. Sorry, Lincoln. See my alias in there. You don't have to say anything, Taz. Okay, take it <laughs> away, Taz. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining me on this session. Uh, my name is Taz. I use she, her pronouns, and I did want to acknowledge that I am presenting from land that was stolen from the Lenape. And let's go ahead and share my screen so I can show you about our amazing educator resources. So can you all see my screen? Oops, I'm on the wrong thing. I'm giving you all sneak peeks. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, so our amazing educator resources. First, our agenda. My agenda wants to pop up here. All right, so we're going to explore some options and no, no, no. Um, explore some options and resources that you can use from Amaze. We are going to do a Kahoot, which has been hyped up a little bit. And I'll, don't worry if you're unfamiliar with Kahoot, I will uh, explain how to play. Then we're going to review some ways that you can use your knowledge from this amazing sex ed conference. And we'll wrap things up. So here are some examples that I'm going to go through and show you exactly how to use on the Amaze website. I think my computer is lagging because every time I hit next, it doesn't go. So I'm just going to go ahead and share the resources for you. I might need. How do I'm here I if you need me, Taz. Whatever you need, we got you. I am having an issue changing my screen off of PowerPoint. Ha ha! I got it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, now it goes to what I needed it to do. So if we go to amaze.org. The page that we're on now is the educators page that you can find at the top of the screen. And so this is going to give you access to a lot of the resources that we have here. So let's go ahead and go through a few of them. This first one here is a new resource. So many of you may not have seen it if you weren't looking for it, where the National Sex Education Standards, the second edition now uh, for the United States, you can go through and view all of the different standards that are being addressed by the Amaze videos. And let's say you're looking for a particular one that you are missing in your curriculum and you want to make sure that you're addressing it. You can go ahead and click on any one of these uh, standards, go ahead and view the videos, and it will bring you right to the videos that are addressed by that standard. So that's one great way that you can find the exact video that you are looking for. Let's go back to our educator resource page. And another resource is our educator toolkits. So these toolkits are going to give you lots of different resources about all of these different topics. So let's say you wanted to do a unit on consent. We open up our toolkit. It will provide you with lesson plans. So there's two lesson plans there. Resources. So it's going to give you uh, posters, um, little diagrams, and some Google Classroom info on this one. And then you can also download all of the documents. So each of these different toolkits is going to have different lesson plans and resources for you all on that same topic. Back to our educator page. 
This next one here is Lesson Plans by 3Rs, which is a wonderful free K through 12 curriculum that Advocates for Youth, our wonderful partners, uh, have created that uh, many of them actually use the Amaze videos as part of the lesson. So you don't have to worry about writing your own lesson using an Amaze video. You can use one of the three R's lessons and three R's stands for rights, respect, responsibility. So from grade four all the way up to grade nine, you can click on any one of these and it will show you the lesson plan using the Amaze video. So this is an awesome resource here. Back to the educator page. All right, so the next one we're going to look at, I'm actually not going to click on this one, but this is Letters for Parents. So if you're interested in uh, informing parents about the fact that you're going to be using a maze in your classroom, we have templates that you can adjust to fit your needs that will uh, give all the information that you need without you having to start from scratch. So that's another good resource. Educator Talks. These are going to have information on educator talks that we hold and you can check out our social media to see when we're going to be holding new talks. Our last one was this one here, Caitlin and Ellen, which uh, they shared different lessons that they have created using the Amaze videos. And there are several others and there will be more to come. Let's see what our next resource is. Playlists. So I'm going to pause on that one for a moment. We're going to come back to that in just a second. The next one is the conference, which I think you all might have been able to find considering you're here right now. Uh, the next one is an award that Amaze received, which is not surprising because it's amazing. And the last one here would be the age guide. So the age guide shows you the age appropriateness in general of the videos. And so at the bottom here, you can actually click on an age group. So let's say you're working with seven-year-olds. You can click ages seven and up. And based on the region, it will bring you to videos. So for example, here's a couple of videos that are ages seven and up appropriate. However, remember this is simply a guideline, um, especially if you're using it for your children. Your children may be at a different um, uh, age level than what is recommended here. It's simply a guideline. So we went through all of those and I told you that I would come back to the playlists. So not only do we have playlists that are pre-recorded here or pre-made for you that are uh, created by several different wonderful sexuality educators. So you can view their playlists. So their playlists are going to be videos that they have chosen for uh, several reasons. Maybe it's their favorite videos or maybe it's videos on a particular topic. So there are several here. You can also create your own playlist. And the way you're going to do that is by going to this purple button up here, My Amaze. You might wanna remember that. My Amaze. So you will have to register. I have already registered. That's why it says Miss Taz up here. So I have already registered. And the playlist that I have here, I named Puberty. So if we go to my puberty playlist, I have three videos here that I chose. And one, there's a few reasons why creating playlists are a great idea. So one reason could be if you, let's say I'm doing a puberty unit in my class, not, uh, I may not be able to show every single puberty video because there are so many, although I would love to probably play all of them. Maybe on a particular day, I'm going to be focusing on one or two of these videos, or maybe I want to send these videos as an assignment. I can go ahead and send them. And if I'm going to this page, the students are only going to see the videos that I want them to see instead of seeing the entire list and them screaming, well, I wanna watch this one and I wanna watch that one. It helps to contain them to only the videos that you're going to be showing them. 
Another good reason to create a playlist is if you want to share which videos you're going to be showing in your classroom with parents. So for example, I set up this particular playlist as if I were going to be sending it to parents. So I named it puberty and then I gave a little bit of info here. So I put this is the list of videos we will be watching for our puberty unit next week. For more information about the topic, click the more info circle located below the video and navigate down to the parent section. So we'll talk a little bit about more info in a moment. Um, the buttons up here are also important. So you can customize your playlist by changing the background color. So I changed it here to Answer Blue since um, Answer is the organization that I work with. This is a way you can share your playlist. So if I was going to share this playlist with the parents of the students in my class, you can also embed a playlist on a website or a blog. And many folks have used this to embed our videos on websites. You can copy this playlist. So let's say I wanted to copy this and create another version for my students. I could go ahead and do that. And then you can also see how many people have viewed each of the videos. So mine, unfortunately, all say zero because I haven't shared this, but you would be able to see how many times that it has been viewed. I do see somebody raise their hand. I will get to you in just a moment. And right now I have the videos and content available for folks. So that's why it shows the more info and all this information on the bottom. You can also choose to click videos only. And that way, whomever you are sharing this playlist with, they will only be able to see the videos and not the additional content. If we enable the content, let's say we're looking at uh, bodies, different shapes and sizes, all beautiful. When we click this more info button, it will bring us to the full page with all of the content relevant to the video. So it gives you a description, a section for youth, some related videos and additional resources for the young people. Then there's a parent section, which gives more information, especially um, information particular to parents. An educator section that gives information for educators, lets you know which sex education standards are being addressed in the video. Some lesson plans that are relevant, and sometimes they're going to be the three R's that include the video, as well as some additional websites, and some books that are related as well. So I did see somebody had a question. I don't know if you wanted to put that question in the chat. So that we can answer it before I go on to the next section. I'm keeping an eye. If somebody sees a question, I know somebody had their hand raised. They can help me out. Yeah, we'll let you know. It might have been an accidental hand waves, but we'll, okay. we'll, we're tracking the chat and I'll let you know if there's a question. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so I do want to pause there and see if folks do have any questions besides the one that um, I thought we had. And I can answer those now before we get into our next section. It appears we may not have any. Hopefully that means I did a good job of showing you all of our amazing resources. There's a question from Sarah. Okay. Says, I'm wondering how many of the videos would you play in a class? For instance, would you play all three of puberty? I think that's going to depend on what, uh, what your lesson is addressing. And it also depends on the content of the videos. So if the content on the videos is very similar or overlapping, then you might be able to play more than one in a class. Um, you may want to focus simply on one video and that way the rest of the class, you'll really be able to dive deeper into the content. Um, as you heard the youth ambassadors say earlier, they really were um, 
hoping that their sex education courses would dive deeper into the content that they're sharing. So a lot of times you might find that it would be easier to just focus on one of these videos and get that deep dive and uh, address the deeper content. Hopefully that answered your question. So I see some of you are already starting to sign into our Kahoot, so that's great. Uh, the way that you're going to join is by going to kahoot.it, so K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T, or if you're super familiar with Kahoot and you have the app, you can also join from the Kahoot app, but you do not need to download it. You can join um, from another tab on your um, laptop or PC if you're on it. You can join from your cell phone. You can join from um, a tablet and you're going to enter the game pin, which is 667-3219. And you can find that at the top of the screen there. And we are gonna give some time for everyone to join. You, I see most folks are doing their name. You do not have to uh, show your name. Other folks will be able to see your name and there might be a scoreboard. So folks may be able to see your name if you're on the scoreboard. And if you use any inappropriate language, they will automatically change your name to uh, something along the lines of funny cat 01. Um, so if you are using this with your students, they won't allow for inappropriate language. So that's a good thing to know. The awesome thing about Kahoot as well is that you can create a lobby video which I have decided to put one in here for you. So if you wanted to have a Kahoot with your class about the Amaze video that you're going to be using, you can put it right into the Kahoot like I've done here. The video that I'm gonna show just a sneak peek of is one of our newer videos called Orientation, Behavior and Identity. And it goes through the differences in sexual orientation, sexual behavior and sexual identity. So let's give a sneak peek of that while we let folks Are you all able to hear? We cannot hear the video. Oh no, my, my sound share must have gone off. Let's see. Can we hear now? Sexual behavior. Yes, perfect. Identity. Sexual orientation is our feelings of physical and romantic attraction. Sexual behavior refers to what we do sexually with ourselves. Ooh, 105 participants. We're of course, looking good. People feel an attraction but do not act on it. Sometimes people have sexual feelings but do not act on them. Sexual identity is how someone thinks of themselves in terms of to whom they are romantically or sexually attracted. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start the Kahoot. However, for folks who have not yet logged in or if you're having any difficulties, the first question is not a points based question. So you don't have to worry that you're going to be missing out on your opportunity. Uh, let's get started. While most people define. Oh, I want to start. Okay. So this first question is going to ask, what country are you from? So let's go ahead and put in your country and we're gonna see a word cloud to see where everyone on this is from. And if you're still joining, you can see the game pin right there on the bottom of the screen, 667-3219. And on the left, the uh, purple circle is going to show a countdown of how much time you have left. Another thing I love about Kahoot is they've really tried hard to make sure that they are inclusive. So they updated, and many of you may, uh, this may be news to you, but you used to not be able to view the question and answer on your personal device when you were playing a Kahoot. And they've now made it so that it's an option for folks who are hosting that you can include that. So I did go ahead and include that today. So that's why you're able to view the question and the answers on your personal devices. So it looks like we might have everybody respond. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the end. <laughs> uh, 
I see the U.S., lots of folks in the United States, Dominican Republic, U.S., unfortunately. I see Puerto Rico, uh, Uzbekistan. So we've got folks from quite a few different countries here, which is awesome. And I'm hoping everybody at this point has been able to log in. So this was a word cloud. The rest of the questions are going to work a little bit differently. They're either going to be true or false. So the true are always going to be the blue and the false are always going to be the red. And then there are also quiz questions, which are going to have between two and four answers. And again, I will go ahead and, and read those ahead of time. So the first one is a true or false. So Comprehensive sex education is intersectional sex ed. Do we think that's true or false? And this is referring to Justine's wonderful presentation that she shared with us on Tuesday. And the photo here is a screenshot from our intersectionality video. Looks like almost everyone has answered. Go ahead and give it a guess if you're not sure. Oh, we're getting a few last minute responses. Ten seconds to go. We might have a couple people who haven't responded. And the answer is true. So comprehensive sex education should be intersectional. If it's not intersectional, it is not comprehensive because we are not being inclusive of all identities. Let's see who's on our scoreboard leaderboard. So Megan C, Mary L and Gab are tied with 994 points. And Judith P and Shelby are in second place with 993 points. That reminds me, I am so sorry. I completely forgot to let you all know if you have not, not played Kahoot that you get points for responding correctly to your answers. You also get more points the quicker you're able to respond to the answers, to the questions. So I will do my best to remember to announce the questions and the responses prior to giving you the, to showing it and allowing you to be able to click. So number three is going to be a quiz question. So multiple choice. You can find the video on a maze that fits your needs by choosing an overarching topic like puberty, selecting a national sex education standard, searching for a keyword, or all of these options are true. So what do you think is the correct answer? Ooh, a lot of quick responses. I gave you all a minute for these, but I don't know if you needed it. I think once I have most of the responses, I may skip ahead so that we make sure we have enough time to get to all of these. All right, I'll give you three more seconds and I'm going ahead. All right, the answer is all of these options are true. So uh, if you're paying attention during my session, you can choose a topic like puberty, you can select a national sex education standard, or you can search by using a keyword. So all of these are true. Let's check our leaderboard again. So now we have Judith P and Shelby in the lead with 1988. Then Mary L, Megan C, and Gab with uh, 1,988 to 1,986 points. So it's a really close uh, score here. And oh, it shows that Pickles is the highest climber with a jump of eight places. So shout out to Pickles too. All right, our next question is a true or false? Amaze videos have been translated into over 35 languages from around the world. So do we think that's true or false? How many languages? Uh, 
And this photo here is from our Amaze International website, showing some characters, different languages. And again, I don't think you all are gonna need the, um, the full time, so I'll give a few more seconds. And the answer is true. Yes, so the Amaze videos have been dubbed over in more than 35 languages, um, including some um, multiple languages. So I remember on the international um, panel yesterday, I believe Mariana was sharing that they not only translated into Spanish, but some of the um, particular native languages in the Spanish cultures down in Latin America. So that's really awesome. Our scoreboard. Okay, Megan C jumped up to the top. And then we have Judith P, Shelby, Mary L, and Rachel. And Jasmine is our new high climber for this round. Next question. What did Justine suggest as a good way to increase acceptance of comprehensive sex education in your school? So did she suggest anonymously poll students to show the need for a healthy student? Did she suggest to bring pitchforks to the next school board meeting or to go on strike until comprehensive sex education is approved? What do you all think Justine suggested? And this photo is a photo from the New York ACLU that I thought uh, gave a good representation of folks promoting K through 12 comprehensive sex education. Talking about reproductive justice, inclusivity, age appropriate. Few more seconds and we'll go ahead and show the answer. And the answer is anonymously poll students to show the need for a healthy student. Let's see who our scoreboard leaders are. Megan C, still in the lead. Then we have Judith P, Danielle B, Mary L, and Leah H. And 16 players hit an answer streak with three answers, correct answers in a row. So nice job, folks. All right. The next question is a little bit of a tricky question. So let's see who is paying attention. Which section of the Amaze website lets you create your own video lists called My Playlists? Is it Videos, My Amaze, Playlist Central, or Educator Portal? Where can you create your own playlists? Somewhere you have to go and register maybe. And once you register, you can begin creating your own playlists. And remember, you can also use playlists created by other sexuality educators as well. We've got most answers in. I'll give it a few more seconds. This one's definitely a tricky one, I think. And the answer is my maze. So it looks like I did trick a few of you. So yeah, the educator portal or the educator tab up at the top of the page will bring you to a lot of our educator resources. However, to create your own playlists, you do have to go to my maze up in the top right corner of the web page and create your own uh, and register to be able to create your own playlists. All right, let's see our leaderboard now. Judith P, Mary L, Megan C, Leah H, and Michelle M. Our next question is another quiz question here. The Ministry of Education in Mexico decided to use this as a means of bridging the education gap during COVID. So did they create pamphlets based on Amaze videos, play Amaze videos on public TV, travel door to door showing Amaze videos, or did they display billboards with Amaze content? What do you all remember if you were on yesterday for the international? And I thought this was a really amazing um, 
uh, an amazing thing that they they were able to accomplish. And this photo here is a screenshot from one of our Amaze videos that was translated into uh, Spanish. And I think that all of these options would have been awesome ways of spreading Amaze information, but which way did the Ministry of Education in Mexico go about spreading knowledge? Give a few more seconds. And the answer is they played Amaze videos on public broadcasted TV, which is really awesome there. So most of you all got that one correct. Let's check the leaderboard. Megan C is on top there just by a little bit. Then we have Mary L, Leah H, um, uh, Ari, and Gap. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It might've been Audi. Uh, let's see. Next question. Ooh, 50 players answered a six answer streak. Nice job. As part of Justine's long-term healing, she shared embodying blank in my life is healing. Was it compassion, friendship, intersectionality, or positive sexuality? Embodying blank in my life is healing. And she shared this as one of her three steps towards long-term healing. This one could be a little tricky too for folks. By the way, Justine's presentation was wonderful on Tuesday. Definitely brought a few tears to my eyes. I'm sure to many of yours as well. 97 answers. Oh, we still have some coming in. Sixteen seconds. I don't know if we're going to need all of that. All right. The answer is intersectionality. So she said, embodying intersectionality in my life is healing. So our leaderboard now, Megan C is still on in the leader position. And we have Gab, Laura M, Katie, and MMM. Next question. This one is about our youth. And I just realized I didn't write this one down. So I don't have this one in front of me. So we're going to have to go ahead and share this one. And the Amaze Youth Ambassadors told us they want to learn about menstruation, virginity, LGBTQ plus relationships, and was it abstinence or social media safety? What did the Amaze Youth Ambassadors share with us earlier that they wanted to learn more about? And they did provide more topics uh, than these. However, these were some of the topics they did share that they wanted to learn more about in their sex education curriculum. And this is a screenshot from our, one of our menstruation videos with a pad, a tampon, and a menstrual cup. We've got 97 answers in. See if we're gonna get a few more or not. All right, let's go ahead and show the answer. Social media safety. So they talked about, I believe it was RJ who shared that um, they wanted to learn more about being safe on the internet. Our leaderboard. Gab, Megan C, Laura M, Katie and J. Still a really tight race here. Everybody's really close. One of our last questions. In which way or ways did the international educators use Amaze videos? Did they use it for teacher training, hand in hand with interactive games? Did they have their students translate and dub the videos into their native language? Or are all of the options true? What do you all think or remember? Did 
They talk about teacher training. They talk about wonderful games that you could play. They have the students voice over the videos. Or are all of these true? We got 99 answers. All right, I think, oh, got one more answer in. And the correct answer is, oops, all of these options are true. So these are all ways that the international folks yesterday shared that they use Amaze videos in their countries. And of course, these are all ways that you can use Amaze videos in your classrooms. So you can use it to learn more information yourself as an educator or for other educators. You can use the Amaze videos with different games. You can also have your students uh, voice over a current video, and it doesn't even have to be in another language. You could have your uh, students voice over even what's already there, and it'll help them reinforce those uh, that information that we want them to know. Leaderboard is still looking really similar. Gab, Megan C, Laura M, J, and Katie. All right, the last question. This is worth double points, so you're gonna wanna pay attention. So, what year did amaze.org share its first videos? The way that this question is going to work is it's not multiple choice. It's not a true or false. This is a puzzle question. So this is the first time we're gonna see this one. So there are going to be four blocks and each block is going to have a number. You are going to need to arrange those blocks into the correct order to uh, make the correct year that answers the question. Depending on what device you're using, the blocks may show up from left to right, or they may show up from top to bottom. So either way, you need to make them in drag, click and drag them into the correct order from top to bottom or from left to right. So again, the question is, what year did amaze.org share its first videos? And we'll go ahead and let you do that now for double points. Wow, y'all are fast. I'll give you a hint. It's not 6,201. not 126. And it might be our five year anniversary. Yours aren't moving. So you have to click and hold and then drag it to where it needs to go. Hopefully that was helpful, Kelly. Sorry that you're having an issue. order is 2016, 2016. So again, it is our five-year anniversary, 2021. Five years ago, we put out our first videos. So let's see who the winner is. In third place, with 10,816 points, we have Bingo. In second place, we have MMM. And in first place, Megan C. By only 32 points. Awesome. And we also want to acknowledge runners up. And so, Megan C., if you would like, you are going to, well, I'm sure you would like, you're going to win a $100 gift card. Woohoo! Great. I hope you all had fun playing that. And remember that that's a great resource that you can use with your students, either by playing all together like we did here, or you can also go ahead and uh, 
um, assign it and they can play it on their own. Coming back to our information here. So we're going to go ahead and do some sentence stems. So if you'd like to take just a moment and answer some of these. So an educational tool I can take with me from the international presentation is Oh yeah, and uh, folks, you can go ahead and one minute, you're gonna, um, you have to enter the raffle. So you still have a chance to win a gift card. So if you'd like to share in the chat, an educational tool that you can take with you from the international presentation. Doing a voiceover, great. Thanks, Tanya. Anybody else have any other tools that they'd like to use and take with them from the international presentation? The QR code hunt. Yeah, I really liked that. That was the first time I heard about that. Definitely be stealing that one. All of the game ideas. The slap game. That one was really cool. Great. Yes, the fun games the educator in Finland shared. Wonderful. Kahoot games. Good. What about the youth panel taught me that teens? What's something that you learned from the youth panel today? They did share such amazing information and they were so honest. It was great to hear. Yes, the entire conference has been recorded and will be sent out. That they need more info about porn, Grey's Anatomy. Um, they want real answers. They want better sex ed, yes. Get rid of the pamphlets. <laughs> Don't assume they don't know. Awesome. These are some great takeaways. Glad we were able to hear from them. Oh no. And an educator resource I plan to use is, so from my session showing the different resources on the uh, maze.org website for educators. What are the playlists? Awesome. The language translations, age levels, parent portion, good. So yeah, especially if your parents are um, interested in learning more about some of the topics you're going to be talking about, it's definitely great to send them over to the parent section. The Kahoot, the national standards, all of the above. Great. Wonderful. That might be all the time that I have left for today.